on clearing the clutter inside and out, we're talking about boundaries. Were you taught that your needs should come last? Is there someone that crosses your boundaries on a regular basis? How well are you able to easily and confidently set boundaries? Learn how to establish boundaries as we continue our month focused on being your most awesome self. Are you ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join me on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out as I teach you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life, get organized, and become more mindful. I'm an award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach, and I destroy the box and examine clutter in all areas. Every episode, I'll give you take action steps that you can easily apply to your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired because for years, I did not have boundaries. I was a doormat, and I'm probably being generous here. I didn't take a good job of taking care of myself. And one of the things that motivates me to do this podcast is I want you, I choose for you to be your most awesome self. That's what I desire for you. And many times we're taught as kids, hey, you know what? The adult matters, the adult's more important, or that you can't have boundaries. Good parents teach you you can have boundaries, but I also think I'm at the age where we didn't have this. We didn't have Oprah. We didn't have a lot of self-help books. I mean, that's really exploded, which I'm very grateful for. I just don't think our parents were taught how to do that. And I would say even today, parents aren't always taught this. So boundaries is something that are very important. And the word kind of makes me go back and forth. I think it's a really good word. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to sound so psychological that it turns people off. But having really good boundaries is important. I see this a lot with my clients. And I even see it with people who I would never dream would be challenged with setting boundaries. And I still struggle with this one. I'm going to be honest. I had a client recently. I had worked with her. And then about four or five months after we had worked together, she contacted me. And she had hired me for organizing. And, but part of my when I'm supporting people in organizing decluttering is coaching because I want to leave you with some tools. I want you to be able to make decisions on your own and, and coaching is a part of that. At any rate, I had first, I wouldn't say let a boundary be crossed because that's not fair because I made a conscious choice. When I work with clients, I give limited email support in between sessions. And so for instance, if I have a client that's going on and on, like we'll discuss that in our next coaching session. Or if it's with organizing, okay, here are some quick steps and then we'll dress it. A few times I'd taken a phone call from her and didn't charge for this. And time is money, especially if you're an entrepreneur. But I take each individual case by case basis. So probably a few times working with her over a couple months, I took probably three or four half an hour calls. So after about three or four months of not working together, she contacts me and I, I usually screen my calls. So I answer the phone and I said, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to focus and you need to have, do this, this, and this, and probably took a five minute call, but it didn't end there. She called the next day. Well, what's my next step? Well, that's kind of what I do is coaching. And then, and I would also get called on Saturday nights and then kind of the final straw for me where I really had to set a hard boundary was I was on vacation. And she called or texted and I said, I'm on vacation. And then she's like, when are you going to be back? And I, and I didn't. And I said, if you want to send me an email, I'll be happy to respond when I'm back from vacation. I didn't tell her when I was returning. I didn't offer to talk to her because this had been months since we'd worked together and calling on the Saturday nights, texting while on vacation. I had finally reached a point like, okay, you didn't set a clear boundary in the beginning. You have to own that. But now it's time to set a boundary. Part of me struggles still with you need to be there for someone. But then on the other hand, 
what happened with this client is people can suck you dry. And I knew that if I didn't cut it off, that I would just, my energy would be depleted. And the other thing with this client is I would make suggestions and there was always an excuse. Now, you know, at the beginning or there, sometimes you don't want to do everything I suggest. I'm completely down with that because I believe we all know what's best for us. But for example, it was something like I said, hey, I shop here and you can save a ton of money at Aldi. I'm now a huge fan of Lidl. I believe I'm saying that right. Good German stores. Woo! -hoo! Way to go, Germans. And she said, I don't like to shop there. I don't like the people there. And I'm kind of chuckling to myself because I'm like, I'm the people that shop there. So anywho, if someone's not willing to make changes, then you know what? Talking with me is ultimately not going to change anything. So I was proud of myself. I finally set a boundary and it took care of it. And whether you are a mom or a friend or a spouse, a child, a teenager, you need to learn how to set boundaries. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Why is it important to have boundaries? Having boundaries allows you to have a positive concept of who you are. I am Julie Caraccio. I like to say that to myself a lot, especially when looking in the mirror. If you leave your concept of self to someone else, who knows what you're going to get? Because the other person doesn't have your best interest at heart. And I'm going to even challenge those of you that are parents. Sometimes, for instance, we probably all know someone that's a parent that had deferred dreams, their dreams didn't happen, and they want their child to fulfill their dream. Maybe not what the child would choose, but the parent is extending their self, and the child, if they don't have healthy boundaries, can get caught up into that. When you have boundaries, you have self-respect and self-love, and that, in turn, provides freedom. The older I get, the more I want is freedom. So what that means is if someone does something that you don't like or crosses what your values are, you can say, hasta la vista, baby. And it gives you peace of mind because you trust who you are and what you need and that you can get that. Having healthy boundaries are part of good self-care. If we don't have strong boundaries, we probably aren't taking great care of ourselves and hanging out with people who don't have our best interests at heart. That was the case of me. If someone needed me to do something, I'd do it. Didn't matter what it was. And again, I just want to stress, I'm not, I'm very fortunate. I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't get caught up in nefarious activities. I don't want to make it sound like I was a criminal or anything that was awful, but you can understand how if someone doesn't have strong boundaries, they begin to take drugs. And I believe the drug challenge in our country is rooted in not loving ourselves, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy. I know I might sound like a broken record to some of you, but I truly believe that. If we loved ourselves, we wouldn't take drugs. We wouldn't use the drugs to fulfill a need. You can understand if someone doesn't have healthy boundaries, how they might try a drug or get addicted to it and not be able to say no, even if they would choose not to do it. Also, others can't define who you are. That's huge. Think of that Nexium. I think that's, I'm hopeful, Nexium, something that cult or that actress from one of the Superman series was one of the high leaders, and then one of the other leaders, I think, was the heir to the Seagram's fortune. These are people would have money, that have access to a lot of things that probably most people don't. Those women who were in that cult didn't know who they are. The higher-ups and the guys, the two women, it sounds like, well, the one, he used her money to buy a bunch of property, but the actress was really high up. They were branding women. They were branding women. They branded people in the Holocaust, and they were branding these women. Just think about that for a second. Or I'm sorry, they were tattooing in the Holocaust. I, I correct myself, but it's the same. People in the Holocaust had no choice, and these women, if they had strong boundaries and a sense of self, wouldn't have allowed themselves to be branded. Because how many of us would choose to brand ourselves to define us? 
One of the reasons that I had to leave the women's group that I was involved in and the coach that I work with, because I didn't have good boundaries with the coach. Probably the group was okay. It was kind of separate from them to some extent. And that was one of the, I thought, you know what? She is influencing you too much. You have lost a sense of yourself. And that was reinforced about five months after I left. It was March and I had lunch with one of the women. And all during the conversation, she kept saying, Elizabeth this, Elizabeth that. And having been away for about five months, I had a different perspective. And I thought, wow, she is really, what does she think? And I came home and I told my husband about it. And I said, did I sound like that? And he said, yeah, sometimes you were a little too much. And when I was reflecting, I did. Well, Elizabeth said this, Elizabeth said that. Well, what about Julie? Julie got lost in there in some way, shape or form. And I said to my husband, if that ever happens again, call me out on it. Because I didn't even realize I lost who I was and, and let someone else influence me too much. How do you know if you have unhealthy boundaries? If you're listening or watching, you might not know. So here are some ways that you might have some unhealthy boundaries. Here are some signs and signals. Feeling guilty when saying no. Raising hands. Still working on this, folks. Aren't you happy I'm still a work in progress? The good news is it has gotten better. I keep reminding myself I'm on a spiral about growing and learning. So we might move up on the spiral, might go down a little bit, but it's not this linear line. I keep moving on that spiral. One of the things I make sure I don't do is go down the rabbit hole of woulda, coulda, shoulda on this because that can completely get me off track and last. If someone has a lack of respect or your need for privacy, that's not good. They shouldn't be snooping in your iPhone, your iPad, your emails, none of that. And have simple self-respect for you. If they don't, that's not good. If they're doing tests, testing you, attempting to test you. My husband had a friend. I still can't get over this. And I don't know if they were married at the time. I think they might have been married. And they went to a party and she had a girlfriend of hers flirt with her husband. She set it up. She wanted to see how he was going to react. That's not good, folks. That's not healthy. That's not a good marriage. If someone says, oh, I needed to test your loyalty, I needed to see if you were faithful to me, nuh-uh. Next. If someone touches you inappropriately, or if they're being more affectionate than you're comfortable with. I mean, that's a great example, because how many times that happen? I think for a lot of women, it happens, sadly, on a regular basis. We saw that with the Kavanaugh hearings and heard what happened to her and women started to talk about unwanted advances at work, the whole Me Too movement, casting couch. You set and allow what someone does to you. And if you have a healthy boundary, you can say, back off. You can't touch me like that. That's not okay. Not acknowledging your emotions. When you have a healthy relationship, you can say how you're feeling, you can talk through it, you can work through it. If you aren't sharing that, maybe it's because you're afraid. Maybe you fear someone will get angry or upset. Or maybe you'll fear the consequences that they leave you. That's not having a healthy boundary. Get organized in 2019. Have you been listening to my podcast? or watching my videos for years, but not taking action? Are you tired of your fears from stopping you from clearing your clutter? Do you know you've lost time, money, and peace of mind because you're disorganized? Are you finally ready to control your clutter instead of having it control you? Come on, join us. My Get Organized 2019 online workshop begins Wednesday, January 9th. Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com for more details and to register. 
Isn't it time you started to enjoy life again instead of being overwhelmed by clutter? People who want you to chop, chop, adjust your life to fit their schedule. Be available to pick up the phone anytime they need it. I once had a friend that dated someone and I was just like, wow. And the friendship ended up not sustaining. It ended because I just couldn't sit back and watch her do this. It was like he said jump and she said how hot. Or having that client call me at all hours, call me on vacation, call me on Saturday nights. If you allow that, you don't have healthy boundaries. Saving people. Hand up again, folks. Yours truly. Now, the good news is I have completely let this go. Go me. I used to think it was my job to save people. Oh, my gosh. We choose what we want to do. We come here to earth, come here to life, experience it. We choose those experiences. And that's my view and how I look at life. Not my job to save anyone. Not my responsibility. It is not mine. I own what's mine and you own what's yours. If you find yourself saving people all the time, that is not having a good boundary. And that doesn't allow you to examine where you could improve in your life. And that's kind of like a, uh, I think that might be called codependency. I'm technically not sure on that because I don't know the definition and I'm not a therapist, but that's probably what I would call it because my life is dependent on me saving you. So unhealthy boundary going on there. Big one here. You go against your values or ethics. Hey, you know what? Just take a couple dollars here or there. No one, no one will know. It will never add up. Just please do this for me. When you are doing something you don't feel comfortable with, you know, you get that feeling like, uh, it's that I'm not, oh, oh, I'm not feeling good about this. It's crossed a boundary. And the last one I'm going to share is staying in a relationship that's past its prime due to fear being alone. That's not healthy. If you were like, you know what, you're great. We just aren't right together. We need to move forward. Then that's having healthy boundaries. Staying around isn't. How do we set boundaries? The first thing I want to say is, no, you have a right to your feelings, needs, thoughts, and desires. Give yourself permission to set boundaries. You're good enough, you're worthy, and you're loved. And that means you can set boundaries. So give yourself permission that it's okay. Be consistent. This may take some time and practice. That's okay. Remember, we're all about progress, not perfection. And trust me, you're going to get pushback, especially from those people that aren't worried about your boundaries. So again, this is another great clue. If you set a boundary and someone mm, pushes and tries to move around and slide on in, pay attention because they're telling you that your needs don't matter. Be direct. I need you to stop touching me right now. Not, oh, you know, uh, I need you to stop touching me right now. When I was in Los Angeles, I took a great self-defense class, and I've used it a couple times. And so I was, uh, when I worked downtown, there was a, a large homeless population, and there was also uh, the Twin Towers, which was, I believe, just men. I mean, it's kind of like, I want to say it was like 25,000 incarcerated in a huge building. And it's crazy when you think about it, because that's about the size of the town I grew up in. It was dusk, and I had stayed a little bit later for work. So it's dusk, I'm coming back. And this guy, tell he just gotten out of jail. And he's like, I need money. Or I don't remember what he said. And so I did my little stance, hands up. And I said, stop. Now, I had to do this for a couple times, but eventually he walked off. He got the message that I wasn't going to, to make a change. I was like, stop. I don't have any money. Best of luck to you. But I was direct. There was no question what I was saying. Don't apologize. How many times do you start a sentence with, I'm sorry? I think as women, we tend to do this more. I don't know many men that say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Or we start a sentence, oh, I'm sorry, I bumped into you. 
Why are you sorry? It wasn't on purpose. It was an accident. So check yourself. Don't apologize. You know, you don't say, oh, I'm sorry, but you know, um, I, uh, please don't touch me. No, don't touch me. You don't apologize. You have a right to your feelings, needs, thoughts, and desires. Don't apologize for that. Learn to say no. I think I might have shared this story once when I was really learning how to set boundaries and do that. I had to tell someone no to babysitting. And I, I liked these kids and it was overnight and, and the parents were divorced and that was, was not a good situation. And that was tough because I saw the kids suffering and I knew I was a positive influence on them. But it was always like, they went away to Africa once he went away for like 10 or 15 days and I stayed with the kids and then I had to, he didn't leave me a check. So I had to then, you need to pay me, you need to pay me. I just sat for your kids. If you have, can go to Africa, you can pay me what I'm owed. So it took practice, but I learned how to say no. Make a list of what you won't tolerate. Know what your limit is. And then you can have that around, you can refer to it. And you have that set in your mind, so when your boundaries are crossed, you can say no. Listen to your inner voice. Guys, it's there to guide you. It's there to support you. It's coming from your sovereign self, your higher self. It's your soul. Honor that and listen to it. If something doesn't feel right, trust that voice. Increase your self-awareness. You're doing that by listening and watching this podcast. Awareness plus action equals change. I didn't know it was unhealthy with the coach and mentor I was working with. I mentioned earlier, I had a talk with my husband. What do you think? Yeah, you were a little googly-eyed there. That wasn't a positive thing. Also as a part of that, what's really important to you? If you clear your clutter to figure out what your priorities are, then you can say no. Because sometimes that's, people get caught up in that, well, I don't know, maybe. I don't know if I want to say no because it's a maybe. If you're clear on what's important, then you can say no. Have an accountability partner. If you're out with a friend, hey, you know what, can you just watch? I'm trying to here to set healthy boundaries. I'm trying to say no, trying to apologize. Just check in with me. You just watch, and if something comes up, let's come up with a signal. My husband and I have a code name when we need to get out of a situation or someone's talking too much. So have fun with it. Create a fun code name. Visualize what you desire in life. I am a huge fan. I'm very visual. So I love creating vision maps, vision quests, seeing that every day. This is what I desire. Put that out there and then draw yourself to it. Affirmations. If you say it enough, you'll begin to believe it. When you can say, I am your name, for me it would be, I am Julie Caraccio. I am good enough. I am worthy. I am love. I am awesome. Whatever works for you, begin to stay those affirmations. Take a deep breath. Have a plan in place, and I'm going to really encourage this, especially if you find this challenging. And when you begin this process, it's not easy. When I was telling the doctor no, because I'd finally gotten paid, and then he called again for me to stay with the kids, I made my friend come over and hold my hand because it was that hard for me. And part of me is like, that's really embarrassing. You were how old? But I was challenged. I can't be upset with myself. I didn't know about boundaries. I didn't know how to do this. I wasn't working with someone at the time. I probably hadn't read a book about it. I just knew that it didn't feel right, and I had to take a stand for myself. And it's not okay if you don't pay me. What are you going to do if someone pushes back? Because, again, I guarantee you if you have struggled with boundaries, people like it when you don't have boundaries because you'll do what they say and they do what they want, and they like that. So what's going to be your backup plan when you get pushback? I'm a huge fan of having energetic boundaries, people. Pull in your aura. People like to put white light around it. People like to put gold light around your aura. You can do smudge, smudge yourself. 
before seeing someone smudge yourself afterwards. And I just want to have a little note here to be open to compromise and be flexible because sometimes that can help you. When I was talking earlier about, oh, maybe not sure if I want to do that because I'm not clear on my priorities, say you need to think about it and then take the time to consider it, all the options. Would that support you? Is that a healthy thing? Is that a good thing? If it is, go for it. And if not, politely say no. Follow through. If you set a boundary and say that you will not tolerate a client calling you at all hours on Saturdays and weekend, then you don't answer the phone. You can't set that boundary and then not follow through. So that's a really critical piece about it. Walk your talk. Talk your walk. However the saying goes, follow through. Create a plan for in the moment when you need to. Talked about if someone's going to give you pushback. You know, Mary always asks you to serve on the blah, blah committee every year. All right, you've got to, you know what, Mary? I'm sorry, I'm unable to. Mary says, but Sue, you've done it every year. I understand that, Mary. Unfortunately, I'm going to not be able to do it this year. But Sue, we really need you. That's unfortunate, Mary. I am sure that there is going to be someone even better than me that's going to be able to sit on the committee. And finally, get support if you need it. If you need a coach, you need to talk to a therapist, a professional, go into more depth, read a book, whatever it is, find that support that you need. You know, guys, we all need support. We all need support. We aren't perfect at everything. We aren't great at everything. And if you're struggling, find the support. And come on, guys, it's 2019. This needs to be your year. I wish this to be your year. If you've been allowing someone to cross your boundaries for years, let this be the year that you stand up. Take actions from today's podcast. Give yourself permission to set boundaries. Be consistent and direct. Don't apologize unnecessarily. Say no when you need to. Trust your inner guidance. Increase your self-awareness about where your boundaries are being violated. Find an accountability partner. Visualize the life you desire. Say affirmations. Set energetic boundaries. Stay open and flexible. Follow through. Create a plan for in the moment when dealing with boundaries. Get professional support if you need it. On our next episode, we're talking about 10 ways to simplify your life. Go out. Clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Are you ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love it if you would rate and review the show because it really helps us in the search ranking. See you next Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Remember, when you clear your clutter, you can create the life you desire.